Today, I am gonna show you potentially the best AI coding assistant that I've ever come across. And it's brought to you by the sponsor of this video, Wasp Lang, which is a full stack web development framework. And the best way to describe it is Ruby on Rails, but for JavaScript. So it just makes it super easy to write full stack applications really quickly. And what the Wasp team has done is created an AI coding assistant that uses the Wasp language and it is able to create full stack web applications with just a single prompt. And the reason it stands out as compared to other AI coding assistants is due to the way that Wasp works and its configuration file. A lot of other coding assistants fail when they have to create more complex code bases because for some reason the front end is built in a different language than the back end or they're not compatible with each other. But with Wasp and the way that they've built it, all of those problems have been removed. So let me show you how it works. Let's go. All right, so this is the page, GPT Web App Generator. And what we're gonna do is actually use one of these example applications today. Let's do a to-do app. So I'm gonna call it to-do. I'm gonna just click this right here, to-do app, use this idea. And it says, a simple to-do app with one main page that lists all the tasks. User can create new tasks by providing their description, toggle existing ones, or edit their description. User owns tasks. User can only see and edit their own tasks. Tasks are saved in the database. Then we choose an app brand color. I'm going to leave it as sky, which is blue. And then we can choose a creativity level. And this is a proxy for temperature where conventional is a lower temperature and creative right here is a higher temperature. And of course, temperature controls how creative or how unique the outputs will be. So here we're just going to keep it as balanced auth method. Right now they support username and password, but in the future they'll have email and password and social auth. So I'll go ahead and click that. Then we generate the app. Now, the nice thing about Wasp is it puts the entire application together or or defines it in a configuration file. And that's really the secret sauce that makes using an AI coding assistant really effective with Wasp because it can understand the back end and the front end all from a single file. Now, what I've experienced with other AI coding assistants is that they'll code a front end, they'll code a back end, and they won't really be able to talk to each other because they're coded with different languages or they're using different libraries. And so using this centralized config file really solves that problem. And here you can see all of the output, generating a new Wasp project named to do app, it's planning. And so it uses GPT-4 and GPT-3.5. For the planning, the upfront planning, it's using GPT-4. And then for the actual code generation, it's using GPT-3.5. You can see right here, the files being created in real time, which is really cool. And the best part, it's completely free. So here we go, it's generating pages. And here's the main.wasp file. This is the magic. This is where all the routing is done. This is where all the page definitions are done. Everything can be defined really easily. And again, that's why it's so effective using an AI coding assistant with Wasp. Now, a couple caveats. You do have to actually run Wasp on your computer to get these apps working, but Wasp is awesome, so that's fine. And right now, you can only run it on a Mac or WSL on Windows. And now it's fixing common mistakes. So I spoke to the founder of Wasp and he said that usually when you're using AI coding assistance through GPT-4, GPT-3.5, there's a lot of common coding errors and they've actually defined all of them and build fixing them into the process itself. So that's super nice. Now we have a dashboard, we have a login and it's done. And you can retry right here. It tells you the total tokens used, 25,000. And now we can run the app locally. So we're going to click this orange brown button and there's a few things we need to do. So I switched over to my terminal and the first thing we're going to do is install wasp. I already have it installed, but I'm going to show you the command to do it anyways. So we're going to do curl dash SSL and then the URL. I'll drop this in the description below and I'll also provide a gist with the step-by-step -step instructions. So you don't need to remember this. Hit enter and it's successfully installed. Next, we switch back to the magic app generator and we're going to download the zip file that contains all the files that we just created. So go ahead and click this button. All right, they're finished and I already extracted it. It's a zip file, so just double click on it. Then I CD into the app folder. So I'm in there now. And then the next thing we're going to do is create the database. So wasp db migrate dash dev. This is very familiar to me because I'm a big Ruby on Rails fan. And so this feels just like that. So we just hit enter. Okay, so I ran into this problem earlier. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to use node version manager to get the correct version of node installed. And if you don't have NVM already installed, I'll drop a link in the description below and in the gist to show you exactly how to get that installed. So assuming you already have NVM installed, you're going to type NVM install 18 node version 
version 18 is the version we need to get this running. Hit enter. It's already installed. I've already done this. And so then we're going to do NVM use 18. And that's going to make sure that we're using node version 18. Okay, now we're going to run the command migrate dash dev. And there it goes. Now it's creating the database. It's migrating, which means setting up the database, installing all the dependencies. All right, enter a new name for the migration. So we'll just put it as to do and it should be done successful. Awesome. Now we have a full to do application ready to go. And the last step, super simple wasp start hit enter and it loaded up automatically and we have a username and password it's all set up for us and this was created in minutes with a single prompt so let's go to sign up and i just turned dark mode off just so you can see my typing create a password we'll say sign up and now we're in so we'll create a new task add task there it is beautiful and we can also just check it off just like that. And we'll add a second one, make videos, add task. There we go. And we can check them off. And there it is, a simple to do app. And then we can log out and we can have multiple users. Each user has its own set of tasks, super, super easy. Okay, and now what do you actually do when you have this full app generated for you? Well, a few things. First, I just wanna mention that Wasp is a full stack Node plus React JS framework. So you can really deploy it anywhere you want, but it has this really nice feature with fly.io where you can deploy your application in one command. And let me show you how to do that now. So the first thing you're gonna do is go to fly.io. And if you don't already have an account, go ahead and sign up. And then once you're in, you need to install the fly command line interface on your machine. So let's do that. So I'm gonna use brew to install it. And the command is brew install fly CTL. And I'm just gonna hit enter. All right, it's done. Next, we need to log into fly. So we type fly CTL auth login. It's gonna open up fly.io. Next, for fly.io, you do need to add a credit card to start deploying. But after you do that, it's free to deploy and start testing it out. All right, once we're logged in, we're back to console and we just type this command to deploy our application. Wasp deploy fly launch to do MIA. And you just replace to do with whatever your app name is. Okay, so we got a quick error. And the reason for this is because we're using SQLite and it's not supported on fly. So switching over to Visual Studio Code, we're going to open up the main.wasp file. And then we're going to add this right here, which is system. PostgreSQL, which is the database we're gonna wanna use with fly.io. Once we do that, we just save and we're gonna run the command again. And I'm gonna actually change the app name because it's taken. Okay, there, we're all done. It just took a few minutes and now we can grab this URL, switch over to our browser and here we go. We got our to-do app up and running. That was super easy. And now it's live on the web. So give it a try. You don't have to just do a to-do app. You can do anything and it's free. And again, this works incredibly well, especially when talking about getting the front end and the back end talking to each other. So please do check it out. Thank you again to the sponsor of this video, Wasp. And I'll drop a link to everything in the description below. If you liked this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.